Okay, guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the CompTIA security practice exam. Um, um, I want to thank uh, all of my new subscribers and uh, thanks for your support. Okay, and if you are not subscribed yet, go ahead, click on the bell for notification and click on the subscribe button. Okay, guys, so today we are doing the next part, which is uh, number seven of the security uh, SYO-601. So let's get started then. A system administrator needs to install the same X.509 certificate on multiple servers. Which of the following should the administrator use? Okay, um, let's go to the multiple uh, choices. Uh, key escrow. A self-signed certificate, a certificate chaining, or an extended validation certificate. So we're gonna drop to the explanation, see which one is it. A key escrow is an arrangement in which the keys needed to decrypt encrypted data are held in escrow so that under certain circumstances, um, an unauthorized third party may gain access to those keys. A self-signed certificate is a security certificate that is not signed by a certificate authority. Um, certificate chaining is a list of certificates used to authenticate an entity. And D, an extended validation certificate is a certificate confirming to X.509 that proves the legal entity of the owner and is signed by a certificate authority key that can issue an extended validation certificate. Right, so uh, the real uh, the, the 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 real answer is D, an extended validation certificate. All right, a network administrator has been alerted that web pages are experiencing long load times. After determining it's not a routing or DNS issue, the administrator logs into the router, runs a command, and receives the following output see it's a cpu report so let's go to the multiple uh, choices to see which one um that could be okay which of the following is the router experiencing um a a ddos attack distributed denial of service attack uh, b memory leak c buffer overflow d resource exhaustion all right, let's see the explanation. What's a DDoS? A DDoS attack is a dinner of service attack. Um, it's a distribution dinner of service attack. The, the incoming traffic flooding the victim originate from many different sources. Okay. Um, a memory leak is a type of resource leak that occurs when a computer program incorrectly manages memory allocations in a way that memory which is no longer needed is not released. A buffer overflow is an anomaly uh, where a program while written data uh, to a buffer overruns the buffer's boundary and overwrites adjacent memory locations. Indeed, uh, uh, resource exhaustion are computer security exploit that crash, hang, or otherwise interfere with the target program or system. It's a sub, it's a CPU user report. Tell us nothing about a uh, memory leak buffer overflow. So, um, as you can see, uh, remember in the diagram that the picture that we had, it was saying something about the CPU. So it's a resource exertion because the resource exertion give you a CPU report. All right, let's go to uh, question three. Which of the following describes the ability uh, of code to target an hypervisor from inside a guest OS? All right, uh, for computing, VM escape, software defined networking, SDN, image forgery, um, container breakout. All right, let's go to the explanation. Um, fog computing or fog networking, also known as fogging, is an architecture that uses edge devices to carry out a, a substantial amount of computation, storage, and communication locally and routed over the internet backbone. Um, VM escape is the process of a program breaking out of the virtual machine on which it is running and interacting with the host operating system. Um, SDN technology is an approach to network management that enables dynamic 
programmatically uh, efficient network configuration in order to improve network performance and monitoring, um, making it more like cloud computing than traditional network management. Um, image uh, fraudery means manipulation of the digital image to conceal some um, meaningful or useful information to the image. And finally, the container breakout refers to the event where a malicious or legitimate user is able to escape the container isolation and access resources, for example, file system, processes, network interfaces on the host machine. All right, so um, the real answer is VM escape because VM escape is the process of a program breaking out a virtual machine on which is running and interacting with the host operating system. All right. Uh, number four, an organization just experienced a major cyber attack incident. The attack uh, was well coordinated, sophisticated, and highly skilled. Which of the following targeted uh, the organization? Okay, let's see which one of these hackers. Um, A, shadow IT. Um, B, um, an insider threat. C, activist. D, an advanced persistent threat, APT. All right, let's see. What's Shadow IT refers to uh, information technologies system deployed by departments other than the central IT department to work around the uh, shortcomings of the central information systems. Um, inside a threat is a malicious threat to, uh, to an organization that comes from people within the organization, such as employee, former, former employees, contractors, or business associates who have inside information concerning the organization's security practices, data, and computer systems. Um, activists is the use of computer-based techniques, such as, such as uh, hacking as a form of uh, civil disobedience to promote a political agenda or social change. Um, Ad advanced Persistent Threat, APT, um, is a stealth stealthy threat actor, typically uh, a nation state um, or state-sponsored group which gain unauthorized access to a computer network and remains undetected for an extended period. The real answer, the good answer now is the APT, all right, the Advanced Persistent Threat. Question five, an organization has a policy in place that states the person who approves firewall control changes cannot be the one implementing changes. Which of the following is the is an example of a change management, uh, job rotation, separation of duties, least privilege. Okay, so we're gonna go real quick to the explanation. A change management is a, a collective term for all approaches to people support and help individual teams and organization in making an organizational change. Job rotation is a technique used by some employees to rotate the employees assigned jobs throughout uh, the employment. Employees practice this technique for a number of reasons. And separation of uh, of duties, also called uh, SOD, um, also called segregation of duties, is the concept of having more than one person required to complete a task. And D, this privilege requires that uh, in a particular abstraction layer uh, of a computing environment, every module uh, must be able to access only the information and resources that are necessary for its legitimate purpose all right so the real answer is separation of duties or sod of segregation or du of duties number six after successfully breaking into several networks um and infecting multiple machines with malware hackers contact the network owners demanding payment to remove the infection and decrypt files the hackers threaten to publicly release information about uh, the breach if they are not paid which of the following best describe these attackers um a gray hat hackers organized crime insiders or activists okay let's see here gray hat hackers uh is a computer hacker or computer security expert who may sometimes violate laws or typical typical uh, ethical standards but does not have the malicious intent typical of a black hat hacker um, organized crime is a category of uh, tran transnational, national, or local grouping of highly centralized enterprises run uh, by criminals to engage on illegal activity, most commonly for profit. Okay, for profit. Um, some criminal organizations, such as terrorist group, 
rebel forces, white supremacists, and separatists are politically motivated. And Cyrus, a malicious threat to organization that comes from people within the organization, such as employees, former employees, contractor, or business associates who have inside information concerning the organization's security practices, data, and computer system. All right. And the activist is the use of computer based techniques, such as acting, uh, such as acting as a form of civil disobedience to promote a political agenda or social change. So the real answer is B, the organized crime, because you see what it says, uh, most commonly for profit. All right. The real answer is organized crime. Question seven. When implementing automation uh, with IoT device, Internet of Things, which of the following should be considered first to keep network secured? Uh, to keep network secured, all right? A, Z-Wave compatibility. Um, B, network range. C, uh, Zigbee configuration. Or D, communication protocols. All right, let's go to the explanation. Um, Z-Wave uh, is a wireless communication protocol used primarily for home automation. Um, network range uh, network range uh, is used by each host to test the network to itself. Typically, uh, this is expressed by the first address in this range, 127.0.0.1. Each of the normal uh, classes also have a range. We in term this is okay. This that has nothing to do with uh, IoT or or with uh, home communication. Okay, so. C, Zigbee configuration uh, or ZR passes data between devices um, or the coordinator. It can also run application. A network can run in either a beacon or a beaconless mode. Communication protocols um, is a system of rules that allows um, two or more entities of uh, a communication system to transmit information via any kind of variation of a physical uh, quantity. So um, the real answer is communication protocols because they they mentioned something um, in the beginning saying that uh, to secure okay so the real answer is communication protocols. Question eight: A local coffee shop runs a small Wi-Fi hotspot for its customers that utilizes a WPA2 PA, uh, PSK. The coffee shop would like to stay current with security trends and wants to implement WPA3 to make its Wi-Fi even more secure. Which of the following technologies should uh, the coffee shop use in place of PSK? All right, this is WPA3, right? So is it web, uh, EAP, or WPS, or SAE? So we're going to find out for the explanation. Um, uh, wireless equ equ equivalent privacy or web is a security algorithm for uh, IEEE 802.11 wireless networks introduced as part of the original 802.11 standard uh, ratified in 1997. Its intention was to provide data confidentially uh, comparable to that of a traditional wide network. They don't use it anymore because it's not secure. Okay, keep that in mind. Um, EAPR Extensible uh, Authentication Protocol is an authentication framework frequently used in network and internet connections. Um, it is defined in RFC 3748, which made uh, RFC 2284 obsolete and is updated by RFC 5247. WRPS Wi Fi Protected Setup is a network security standard to create security wireless home network. And uh, SAE um, in cryptography, uh, simultaneous authentication of equals is a security password based authentication and password authenticated key agreement method. WPA3 personal allows uh, for better password based authentication even when it's using uh, a non complex combination. WPA3 uses SAE. Uh, to provide stronger defenses against uh, password uh, guessing, SAE secured key established protocol. All right, so the way answer is the last one D because you can you see there's a combination between uh, WPA3 and SA and SAE. All right, so the answer is SAE D. 
Number nine, a security engineer uh, at an offline government facility is concerned about the validity of an SSL certificate. The engineer wants to per perform the fastest check with the least delay to determine if the certificate has been revoked. Which of the following would best meet uh, these requirements? Um, RA, OCSP, CRI, CSR. All right, so let's go to the explanation here. RA, Registration Authority, is a function for certificate enrollment used in public key infrastructures. It is responsible for receiving certificate signing requests for the initial enrollment and renewals for people, servers, things, um, or other applications. OSCP, Online Certificate Status Protocol, is an internet protocol used for obtaining the revocation status of an X.509 digital certificate. We could stop here. We could because the OSCP uh, is what they use to uh, verify if a certification is if, if a certificate was revoked or not. All right. Um, CRI. To be honest with you, for me, this has nothing to do with a, a, a certificate. Um, because it's a CRI. If it was CRL, uh, it would be certification revocation list. But this one, I didn't put any uh, meanings or definition. If you guys know something about it, drop it in the comment. All right. And uh, CSR, certificate sign request, um, is a message sent from an applicant to a registration authority of the public key infrastructure in order to apply for a digital uh, identity certificate. So the real answer is OCSP, right? Um, number 10, a company needs to fix some audit findings related to its physical security. A key finding was that multiple people could physically uh, enter a location at the same time. Which of the following is the best control to address this audit finding? A, fraud cage, B, man trap, C, biometrics, or D, proximity cards. All right, so let's go to the explanation. A Faraday cage is an enclosure used to block electromagnetic field. A Faraday field may be informed by a continuous covering um, of conductive material or in the case of a Faraday cage by mesh such materials. A main trap is a physical security access control system comprising a small space with two sets of interlocking doors such that the first set of door must close before the second set opens. We could stop here because <laughs> this is exactly what we need to control uh, an area where there is uh, like, you know, multiple people trying to access at the same time. Biometrics are, uh, uh, biometric or body measurement and calculations related to human characteristics. Biometric authentication uh, is used in computer science as a form of identification and access control. Um, proximity cards, um, also known as a key card or key card, is a contactless smart card which can be read without inserting it into a, a reader device. Um, as uh, required by earlier magnetic stri uh, stripe cards, such as credit card or contact type smart card. All right, so the real answer now, uh, the good, the best answer uh, would be main trap because like I said uh, earlier, it's the best way to control a uh, flow of uh, traffic, uh, right? So it's a uh, main trap. Okay, all right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the, 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 the number seven. Um, and uh, again, I'm, I want to thank uh, all my subscribers. And guys, if you are not subscribed yet, go ahead, click on the subscribe button, and also click on the bell for notification. And we'll see you for the next video.